I'm Steve for This Week With Cars and today I'm back with Barn Sprite number six. If you don't know how Barn Sprite number six got to the point where it is now a pink car, I've included a link to the first video in the description below. I haven't done anything to this car since the last time you saw it, except that I did take one of the hard tops that I had on one of the bug eyes and restored that and it's now on this car. I needed to restore it for another bug eye that went to a Concours event and now I'm using it on this car. I think this car was in the worst shape of all the barn sprites that I got so it's going to be a pretty big job to get this car to a roadworthy condition and that's what we're going to start the path to today. Under the bonnet things are still the way that we left it last time. I did get the engine to run but that was with supplying fuel directly into the carb fuel bowls and connecting a wire straight from the coil to the battery. There are so many things on this car that are dependent on each other. I can't fix the clutch until I fix the brakes and I can't fix the brakes until I fix the clutch. So I had to fix everything in order to have the car move or stop. So I think I'll start at the back of the car. This car has a beautiful new paint job but as you can see, there's no grommet for the fuel tank. So the fuel tank needs to be dropped out the bottom of the car so that this grommet can go on. But that's okay because the first step in getting fuel up to the engine is making sure that the fuel tank works. I'll take the fuel cap off so that it doesn't scratch the body when it comes through. To drop the fuel tank, I need to disconnect the fuel line that comes out of it and then unbolt all the bolts along the perimeter of the fuel tank and then it can just drop down. The fuel sender is located on the top of the tank so that is not accessed until the tank is lowered. This is pretty rusty and dirty. I'm going to clean it off first with a wire brush. Now that it's cleaned up, I can use some penetrating oil that will get into the threads. This nut here is a 5 16 Whitworth. Here's the wire for the fuel sender. Now I can remove the entire tank. fuel sender is probably no good so let's get that off and get that replaced and while we have it out we can take a good look at what the inside of the fuel tank looks like. Let's see how bad this is. It is frozen up from sitting. It will no longer move. I'm surprised that this isn't really rusty. You can see the fuel level where it had sat over the years. From what you can see right now, it doesn't look terrible down in there. I'll have to get this drained out and flushed and then see what the real condition is. Here's the tank and I have all the fuel drained out now. It doesn't look the best down in there. And actually, if I try to blow air in through the outlet, Seems like it's completely clogged up. So I'm just gonna throw this tank away. These are available, so it's not worth cleaning this one up. There's another tank that I found in my parts in the back. The inside looks a whole lot better. And if I take my air gun and I blow it in through the outlet of the tank, you can hear this one is not clogged up. So this is the tank that I'll put into the bug eyed spray. Since the fuel tank was clogged, I also want to take off this pipe from the fuel pump so that I can blow air down the pipe and make sure that this is not clogged up as well. Now with the line unhooked, I'll put it back up in the air and try to blow through it. Just looking at it, it looks like it could be clogged. Yep, it's clogged up. I'm gonna take something, stick it in here. 
Hopefully it's just through this little bend right here where fuel would have been sitting. If the entire pipe is gummed up, I have a lot bigger problem. I've wrapped some mechanics wire around my pliers. Let's see if that has made any difference. Well, I think that line is good and clogged. This is where the line connects to the tank. And if we follow that forward, we have this little dip right here. So I'm going to cut the line about right here. And hopefully it's only this rear section of the line that's clogged. And from here forward is unclogged. Well, when I broke through, gasoline just started leaking out. So I know that I am past the clog now. Let's just double check. I can hear it blowing out in the front. So now we have a good usable fuel line. Here we can see the new fuel sender moves easily. The old one completely locked up. So I'll get this installed. I also have a new seal that goes between the fuel tank and the floor. I'll reinstall the sender and then the tank can go back up. Before the tank can be reinstalled, I need to put the grommet into the body. Have my sender wire connected. Don't forget to do that first thing. Otherwise you're going to be taking the tank down again. Here's a piece of the old tank body grommet that goes up on the top. This can be a bit of a trick because I need to get it to pass through the hole on the top. I'm going to put one nut right here to hold it. I'm going to set my jack under this corner so I can lift the tank up when I have it in place. I have my hand on the filler tube, positioning it into place, and I'll lift it up with the jack. Now I just need to get the bolts lined up. There we go. I'm going to take some of this quarter inch fuel hose, put these two pieces of pipe back together, and this hose will be able to clip up into the original clips that the pipe was held up with. I'm putting two clamps on each side not because I'm too worried about the fuel leaking, but if it starts to suck in air from anywhere, then the pump and the carbs are not going to work correctly. So making sure it's an airtight seal is very important. I should be able to get fuel from the tank up to the fuel pump now. This fuel pump is the original one and there's a lever right here so that you can manually prime the fuel pump and it's all gummed up. I think the lever may have just broke. So this pump is going to need to come off so that I can replace it. Getting to the front fuel pump bolt can be done easily through the engine bay and getting to the rear one can be done through the foot well. There you can see it there. Here's the new fuel pump. These do not come with a priming lever like the original pumps for these cars did. But other than that, they look pretty similar to what the original pump looked like. Pretty simple to install. Just put the gasket on and bolt it back up. The new fuel pump is installed and now I can connect the fuel pipes. The fuel lines are connected back up. Now I can put fuel into the tank. We'll see if this works. Now I'm going to crank the engine over and if the pump and the fuel system is working, we should see fuel start to squirt out here. I'm just going to pull it on the cable over there so I can watch what happens.
when you're cranking a car with a mechanical pump over so many times to get it running after it's sat, that's why, because it takes a while for the mechanical pump to start pumping the fuel up to the carburetor so that your engine will start. Lastly here, we just need a few short pieces of hose to connect these pipes to the carburetors. This car came with this ridiculous looking shifter boot. What should be there is a metal cover like this with this type of boot. That looks a lot better. If you remember from last video, there is no starter cable. The cable and its knob is gone completely. So there's no way to start the engine from the cockpit. This is the new starter cable. Nice thing about this is it has a correct looking knob on it. Even the uh, sh shielding around the cable, the sheathing looks very original looking. Just one nut holds it to the back of the dashboard. The cable is now installed into the dashboard. On this side of the cable, it is held to the starter solenoid with this device right here. And by loosening this and changing where it is tightened onto both the rod and the cable, you can adjust the slack in the starter cable. So when you are adjusting this, you wanna make sure that your cable is pulled all the way from the dashboard. Otherwise there may be slack and your starter cable knob will be sticking out slightly from the, the dashboard. Now that I have this attached and where I want it, I'm going to pull the cable, make sure it works. Now that I have a way to start the engine, I need a way to turn the ignition coil on. This car has been outfitted with what looks like a homemade wire harness. This is the incorrect fuse box for a bug-eyed Sprite. And what should be sitting right here is a regulator. I have a new voltage regulator right here. As you can see, there are five terminals on it. And this wiring right here, I suppose, was probably connected to a voltage regulator. The wiring on this car is going to give me a challenge. Number one, because this is a different type regulator than was obviously connected here. You can see that the terminals are different. And currently, the car has no generator or alternator at all. So I'm going to figure out which wires I do need connected to the regulator at this time to get the coil powered from the switch. And I will leave the other ones disconnected until I have a generator or alternator to put into this car. Luckily, when someone disconnected these wires, you can see this one says A1. This one says A. We have F. This one over here is D. This one here is E. And if you see, these are actually the letters on this regulator here. So if I were to take these terminals off, and use the wires and connect them up the way they're labeled, they may potentially be in the correct order. But I am going to be very careful before I hook any of these up. The most important of these wires is those labeled A, because one of these wires should come from the battery and the other one should take the battery power to the fuse box. So first I need to track down where this yellow wire runs to. So I'm going to switch my multimeter to check for continuity. I'm going to connect one end to this yellow wire. And now I can probe around to see if I can find the other end of it. Has continuity to this end right here, which I suspected. I'm going to move my probe to this wire and see if I can figure out where this one is connected to. Seems like that one is connected to the fuse box, which is correct. These two yellow wires, I can hook up to the A terminal on the regulator. This is some pretty terrible wiring. 
and the wires aren't really long enough. It's putting a lot of stress on them when I try to connect them up to the regulator. So I'm going to have to put another piece of wire here to lengthen this so that I can connect it to the regulator and not worry about it falling out. Now we'll connect the yellow wire back up to power again. Double check that the terminal on the regulator does have battery power now, which it does. And the terminal over here at the fuse panel has power. Out the other end of it, there are no wires connected at the moment. So I don't need to worry about the battery power going to anything inside the car right now. Next thing I need for the regulator to work is a ground and the ground should be connected to E. This one here says E. So let's see if that has continuity to ground, which it does. So this one is also correctly labeled. I'll hook that up to E. The last one that I would need would be labeled A1. And that is what supplies the ignition switch with power and provide switch power to the fuse box. Here's one labeled A1. So I'll connect that up to the A1 slot. But before I can do that, I will need to extend this wire so that it comfortably reaches over here. The rest of the wires that connect to the regulator would go for controlling the generator or alternator. So I'm not going to cook those up at this time, but I do need to add a ring terminal to the end of this wire so that it connects properly to the solenoid. Now let's turn the key and see if anything happens. The wipers are on. So, looks like we are getting switch power. I think I heard, yep, fuel gauge is working. Now I just need to verify that we do have switch power over here at the fuse block. So we have full time power on this side. And this side should get power when I turn the ignition key on. I'm going to do that now. So we have power to the fuse box from the ignition switch now. So I can just connect my wire from the coil. This one right here, I just need to put an end on it and I can connect it up to the fuse box. I was looking at where I should connect this up to the fuse box and I noticed that there's actually a black wire running to the coil over here and that is getting power from the fuse box already. So this red wire was used only for hot wiring the car within the engine bay. All I need to do is disconnect this and everything will work correctly. Looks like it still runs. I feel like I've done a lot of work today, but at least we can get fuel up to the engine and we can control the engine from inside the cockpit. If you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.